This is a 25 euro or dollar IDE controller for the Amiga 500 or 2000 or any Amiga that has the classic 68K um, in the 64 pin version. Yeah, we are going to put this into an Amiga 500 and see if it actually works. <laughs> So to put this IDE controller in, I use my trusted A500 in black, which I have opened. You can see it has quite some work done to it. So this is my internal GoTek, um, which displays all the information on the Amiga screen instead of some kind of display. And you can uh, control it with, a, with some keys on the keyboard instead of the buttons on the GoTek itself. So that is pretty nice. And there's a video actually out there where I do that. And I have some switches here and all that stuff. Uh, there's a kickstart switcher, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's a kickstart switch. So what we want to do now is we take out the CPU. We put this under the CPU like this. And then we have to add two cables and we have to connect these two somewhere on the port here. We will check that in a minute. So let's first take the CPU out. We'll strap in for that. My special chip lifter pro, which I created. And the CPU is relatively loose in here. Let's see like this. And I think we will put the CPU in first into this IE thing here. Okay, I think. I think we're in. This looks good. And these look good too. Okay, nice. So next we put this back into the socket. Uh, we have to remove the shield here. Okay, we have that. Now this goes in here. Okay, and now we have this incredible installation instruction, which I have printed in black and white. And we have a red cable and an orange cable, and I actually used the same colors. So these connect to here. And then we have to solder these two points here and I now realize that we have to remove this again because there's no way I can solder this so okay all pins are still intact very nice so first we go and solder these here and here if I see this correct these and I don't want to remove the board from the case so I will solder these on top and I will cut these and just use the wires. Snippity snip. Now we tin these and put them in and see what happens. No idea if this works or not and we solder orange goes here and the red goes here so just like it's here. Orange on the right and Red on the left, number one, number two. Okay, that's on. That should be all that's necessary to actually connect these. And we have red here and orange here. And now we should have an IDE controller. That was pretty easy. Okay, nice. Let's put this on. Oh, no, we have to put a cable in here and a drive or something. Okay, I just realized I have a drive here which has the cable 
but which also has a plug for five volts. And we don't have that. I'm not sure if a CF card reader would work here without an external power supply. Ah, oh, wait, here's actually here's a VCC, but I'm not sure if this gives us five volts for this drive because that would be a bit much. So what I will do for now is I will put five volts on here and I will just plug this in. I will just check if it works. And if it does, good, then I will go and find a better solution. If it doesn't, well, no harm done. So let's see, where is pin number one? Since it is not keyed, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty confident it's like this. So we have that connection. Let's put that down here and that up here and that in here. And now we have to find the power. Okay, so what I found is this power supply, which gives 12 and 5 volts, which has one of these Molex connectors. And I have one of these. Uh, that doesn't work. But I also have one of these. And that does work. And we plug this into this. Oh, shoot. And now we just have to cut this and this and connect the 5 volt. And just for testing purposes, we are not going to solder these wires, just twisting them. Numero uno, like that. Okay, let's see that these cables don't make contact with anything. About ready for test. So this hard drive actually has, I think, 3.1. The workbench 3.1 installed, so this should boot right into workbench, if it can. Let's see. Let's first plug in the drive. Yeah, lifts, good. So we have the five volts there. Then we need power to the Amiga. Yeah, so this could uh, blow up and kill everything. Or it could just work. Not sure. Let's see. This drive is... It works? It freaking works! Immediately boots. Yeah, and since this is for the 1200, it failed to load the workbench, but it's there. <laughs> this is crazy, it just works. You just connect two wires. And it works. And you have an IDE interface and an Amiga 500, which is awesome. So now I think we have to set up a CF card because I've just found this CF card reader. And maybe this even works without the five volts. Or we could connect the five volts from the Amiga somewhere and uh, don't need the external power supply. Okay, grab another cable. Let's plug this in here. Not sure which one is which, but who cares? Let's put this in here. That was smooth. And now we put in this. And then we need a CF card to check if this actually works. And maybe it actually works without external power. Let me grab a CF card quickly. Everything is connected. We have no external power supply, so that might not even work. Let's see. Yeah, so without a power supply, this is not going to work. So we have to connect power somehow. Let me see where we can get our five volts. 
for testing purposes, I'm connecting the white wire to five volts, which should be the right pin here, and black to the ground wire. And there's actually two pins or two spots here, which say VCC and ground, which is here and here. And I will just go and put in these stupon cables and uh, we will see if that changes anything. So let's start this up and let's see if this actually makes this boot. You can even use the keyboard to push down on the cables, which is good. And believe it or not, that actually works. We again fail because the SD card is the same for the 1200 as the disk drive, but it works. So I will put in a fresh SD card, boot Workbench 3.1, and uh, we will go through the process of installing Workbench 3.1 on this. So to make this clear, you can actually get grab the five volts from the IDE adapter here, which is pretty nice. So we have a pretty compact setup and I will cut off the cable here so that I have just one. Not sure if you can use two. Hmm, that could work, but I'm not quite sure if it does. So you could probably get away with a SD card or a CF card as drive B and the normal hard disk as drive A. I'm not sure about this. That could actually work, but for now I'm good with this. Uh, I think I will leave these in here for now. Like this. And yet, yes, it's all very precarious here. I know, I know, I know, I know. Still no. So, okay. So let's put in a fresh SD card. I have a 512, 512 oops, megabyte SD card right here, which should be blank. I'm not sure, but who knows. So let me grab a kick, uh, workbench disk or an installer for 3.1 because there's a 3.1 kickstart in here. And here's my set of totally real and legal Amiga disks. So let's plug that in here. Let's start the installer and first we have to set up the um, CF card and HD toolbox so let's see if that actually works and if it sees our card yeah, it does at least it sees our um, SCSI controller which is really an IDE controller Go to change drive type and we have, oh, it found this one here and we say define new and we say read config. Yes, sir. Unit is not a disk type seven. That is unfortunate. Now we call this thing a disk. And we say, OK, give a name for the drive. Drive name is DH0, I think. And we say, OK. And we say partition drive. And we have two partitions of a roughly 244 meg, which is DH0 and DH1. DH0 is bootable. Um, and we just say, okay. And we say, save changes to drive and exit. Awesome. So we still don't see anything. So we, we reset. And nothing which is not good. Ah, there we are. Okay, so we have DH0, DH1, and we just go and click DH0 once, and we say form a disk. And we call this, let's call this system, uh, almost system, and we click format, and we say format, and yes, we really want to do this, and Bam, we have our first hard disk. And the same for DH1. 
format and we call this work quick format format again yep and bingo bingo so now we have our two disks which are empty now we go and install work workbench 3.1 choose wisely I will choose Deutsch which is German for Germans it wants the local disk yeah now there comes some disk jockeying around and there's our installer put that back in a freaking while what's going on here I always forget that this is a stock a500 it takes a while to just do stuff there we are okay so we say yes install expert of course install real install nope uh, system yes it's correct German and English yep no printers and we want the German keyboard and the American and British -ish keyboard ish and away we go yeah and that will take a while now okay I think we're on the home stretch here it's installing the 68040 library. I'm not sure why. So 97%. So this is still a bone stock Amiga. Only difference, I think it has a Super Denise. I'm not sure if I put it in here, um, which you can just put in. And I have the one Mac chip RAM mod and I have my GoTech inside. So there we are. It's done. Let's eject the disk. Continue. And this should boot from hard disk now. And there we are. Awesome. Yay, so you see I have just one Mac of chip RAM here and no other memory. So now let's clean all this up. Uh, make a permanent connection for the power and Put it all back together and then we have an a500 with an internal hard drive just like the a600 or the 1200 so this would have been my dream setup as a kid having an internal hard disk and you could also put the cf card somewhere over there where there are those slots or you could put it in the ram expansion slot down here so then you can just change it and put stuff on using Win UAE and stuff like that. So I did strap in again and first order of business is cleaning up all this stuff. This can stay like this. Um, and I will cut away this cable here because I don't need it. And I will not experiment with a second drive right now. If you want to see that, let me know and I will do a video about this. But not right now. And you can just go and cut the cable right here like that and you have a pretty nice one IDE cable that was step one next step is to actually solder these two cables in here okay. so here we are and we have these two cables which is the white and the black we have on this adapter two positions VCC and ground and the white cable goes into the VCC sorry for the glare the white cable goes into the VCC and the black cable goes into the ground and we will just solder these in there okay those two pins are soldered in and there's the white and the black cable at VCC and ground so now we can 
put this back in there. I want to show you the other side. So this is how this is here. We have the white cable on the right, the black cable on the left, because those two middle pins are ground. Right is 5 volt, left is 12 volt, 12 volt is not used, so yeah. And with that, I am going to put this back in here. Now we need to find a way to safely mount this inside the case. And here I have a plastic bag, which is from my C64 build. I think I will just use this. Yeah, this was a power rail and filters kit. For now, of course, you know, it's always just temporary. <laughs> right. So this card is in here for good. Let's put that down here. Let's put the keyboard back on. It's working. It actually could work. Okay, let's do one final boot test and if it works we just close it up and good to go yeah there's nothing that's not good i think hmm i think it just wasn't plugged in correctly yeah there we go perfect okay so you have to really push down on this adapter because it has very short legs at least in my case here and uh, yeah, then it actually works. Good. Um, let me close the case. So here it is, an A500, which looks like a stock A500, but it has a GoTek inside. It has a kickstart switcher. It has a hard drive, 512 megabytes, which would have been totally freaking awesome back in the day. Yeah, and it still looks like an A500. You couldn't ma make out from the outside that it is actually not a stock A500, except for the black case. Pretty happy with this. Um, this IDE 68K, as it is called, cost me 25 euros on eBay. I will link in the description. It's an open source project, if I'm not completely mistaken. Yeah, and it freaking works. And you can do it all inside the case with an CF card and all the good stuff. So if you want to see more of this or how to install WHD load and stuff like this, which would not run on this Amiga because this Amiga only has one Mac of chip RAM or even more stuff we could do through this Amiga, like uh, put in a very cheap accelerator, which I have lying around, which would also plug into the 68K socket. So that would be a bit crowded and I'm not sure if this would actually work. So this brings me to the end of this video. And next week, here's a little sneak peek of what's to come. See you next week. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Retro is the new black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share, and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.